My name is Lionel Tuzig and I work at EASA on aircraft certification. And um, I will present to you a few elements of uh, vital uh, certification requirements linked to vertiport design. So to give a bit of background, here is a timeline of the technical requirements we have developed. Back in 2018, uh, we proposed a special condition, uh, VTOL, uh, which included the uh, high-level objectives of uh, what the aircraft requirements need to meet. Then in 2019, we uh, addressed all the comments that we had received during the consultation, and we published the final version. And since 2019, we have been uh, publishing regularly means of compliance, uh, which explain uh, means to meet the high-level objectives of the special condition. And uh, we have uh, proposed a second set of uh, requirements that uh, we hope uh, to publish in a final version in uh, 2022, uh, this summer, uh, as well as a third set uh, towards the end of the year. So one important aspect of uh, the technical requirements are the safety objectives. And uh, for this, we looked at uh, what exists for uh, small airplanes or normal category airplanes, where you have uh, different categories depending on the number of passengers on board. While for uh, small rotorcrafts, um, the safety objectives do not depend from the number of passengers on board, which can be from zero to nine. However, you have two categories, category A, where uh, in case of uh, loss of the critical engine, the aircraft is capable of a continued safe flight and landing. And category B, where in case of the same failure, uh, non-scheduled landing has to be assumed. So for VTOL aircraft, we combine both approaches and uh, we have introduced a category enhanced. Uh, which corresponds to the category A of uh, rotorcrafts, and a category basic corresponding to the category B, and uh, with uh, three different uh, subcategories that uh, depend on the number of passengers on board uh, from zero to nine, and they are aligned with the categories uh, from airplanes. For each category, we then uh, associate a numerical safety objectives. To do this, we looked at the small airplanes uh, where the safety objectives go from 10 to the minus nine to 10 to the minus six uh, per flight hour um, for uh, the different categories. While for small rotorcrafts, um, if you use a numerical objective, this objective is 10 to the minus nine regardless of the number of passengers on board. At the time we developed the special condition, we also had input uh, from JARS uh, for drones, uh, where the safety objectives were also dependent on the categories and going from 10 to the minus nine uh, down to 10 to the minus seven. So looking at all these products and uh, doing also a number of simulations to see what um, safety targets uh, we could aim at uh, with those numbers, uh, we decided for the category enhanced to have an objective of 10 to the minus nine, as well as for the highest category uh, of uh, basic. And uh, this aligns with uh, what we are requested for small helicopters today. Then for the lower categories of basic, uh, we go down one order of magnitude for each category down to 10 to the minus seven. Um, while we developed the special condition uh, VTOL to be compatible with autonomy or remote piloting, those aspects have not been uh, included for now, uh, which means that those safety objectives are applicable only if the pilot is on board. Uh, but it's uh, interesting to note that uh, JARUS has uh, already uh, thought about uh, safety objectives for autonomous drones, and they have increased um, the safety objectives by one more order of magnitude uh, for the lower categories. So now that we have defined the categories, we are linking the categories to the type of operations. 
And for the category enhanced, this is requested when flying over congested areas, uh, regardless of the type of operations you are conducting. So a typical example uh, would be um, a flight of a vital aircraft over a city. This category enhanced is also requested when performing commercial air transport of passengers. And an example of this would be um, an airline that provides a service uh, when you land at the airport uh, to uh, shuttle you to your hotel. Uh, in such a case, you will be also entitled to the category enhanced. The category basic is for all the other type of operations. For example, what is called uh, today for helicopters, uh, special operations, as long as it's outside of congested areas. An example uh, would be a private flight um, over the countryside. With each category, we saw that we have uh, associated numerical objectives and we have also uh, performance objectives. For the category um, basic, so outside of congested areas, if we imagine um, the aircraft uh, taking off uh, from the vertiport, if uh, during the flight uh, you have uh, the equivalent of the loss of a critical engine, then uh, the aircraft must be able to land in a controlled manner. And this is what we called a controlled emergency landing. And this corresponds to um, a power of landing for an airplane or an autorotation uh, for a helicopter. For the category enhanced, instead, if we look at a similar flight, and uh, we again have a failure uh, somewhere uh, during the flight, then the aircraft must be able to continue to the original uh, destination, or it must be able um, to divert uh, to an appropriate uh, vertiport. And uh, this objective is what we call the continued safe flights. And landing. So this highlights a few elements uh, from the technical requirements uh, for the aircraft and uh, these technical requirements then uh, are used um, in the design of the vertiports. And um, so let's look at an example of uh, vertiport uh, design. So let's imagine we are within a city, um, in the center of the city, with a well-connected uh, transportation system. Um, we have seen uh, in, uh, earlier in the presentation that we will uh, recognize uh, ICAO Annex 14 uh, types of uh, design for the vertiports. However, we are also introducing uh, an obstacle-free volume, which is an innovative approach uh, that we think uh, will be useful in uh, the urban environment. And uh, this is how this uh, volume is uh, constructed. So if we are starting from the aircraft uh, on the FATO, um, we have a first portion that is uh, vertical and this allows to clear nearby obstacles. Here you can see the terminal building. We have also fences and we may have uh, other obstacles uh, nearby such as uh, trees or lampposts. The volume then uh, goes up uh, as a funnel shape and uh, this gives uh, more space for the aircraft uh, to maneuver uh, during the descent or the takeoff. Then from uh, the top of the funnel at a certain height, we have uh, the obstacle limitation surfaces that extend uh, similarly to what we have uh, today for heliports. So we give the option to the manufacturers to demonstrate during certification that their aircraft can operate in such a volume. And we will test during certification that this can be done uh, in a repeatable uh, manner, including with uh, certain uh, failures during the takeoff or the landing. The manufacturer can then publish this information in the flight manual and in turn, uh, this will be uh, used for infrastructure design. By adding at the level of the FATO uh, safety area, as is done today for heliports, and then elevating from the edge of uh, the safety area, another volume 
that provides then a, some buffer to the volume that has been demonstrated during certification. And this is this volume that we refer to as an obstacle free volume. So the advantage of uh, having defined this volume in certification is that uh, the infrastructure designer can just take uh, this information and has a safe volume um, to design and for the aircraft to operate in. We are leaving the dimensions uh, of this volume up to the aircraft manufacturer so that uh, he or she can tailor this volume to the performance of the aircraft. However, we are also proposing on a voluntary basis a specific uh, volume with given dimensions. And uh, we call this volume the reference volume type one. And it has been uh, designed by the Vertiport uh, task force I mentioned earlier in this presentation. And it has the following dimensions. The vertical portion goes up for three meters and then the funnel up to 30 meters. The footprint on the ground is 2D by 2D, while at height it's 3D by 4D. From there, you have the obstacle limitation surfaces climbing with a gradient of 12.5 degrees. This volume has been designed specifically for obstacle-rich environments, and we have tested it virtually throughout the world in a number of cities to see how it would fit. And I will present uh, one example. This is uh, Cologne, uh, Germany. The EASA headquarters are along the Rhine River next to the central train station. And between uh, those uh, two uh, buildings, you have a small square. And we wanted to see how this reference volume type one would fit in the square. This is a view of it for a D value of uh, 10 meters. And uh, you can see that uh, it clears at the nearby hotels. On this uh, second view, you can see that uh, the obstacle limitation surfaces and uh, clears the central train station. And uh, you can see on the square itself, there is a temporary barrack, which is a police barrack. And uh, this uh, explains um, how the um, vertical portion of the volume helps uh, to clear nearby obstacles. This is uh, one uh, last view from over um, the bus uh, terminal that is uh, located at the central train station, uh, which uh, shows again that uh, the volume fits well in the urban environments. So this is a possibility that we are giving uh, both to the aircraft uh, designer and the infrastructure designers uh, to have a common reference to help with the integration in an obstacle-rich environment and to facilitate uh, uh, intermodal connectivity.